the number one misconception, I think, of celebrate recovery is it's automatically, oh, it's for drugs and alcohol. And, uh, and so, so often people are sitting in, in, in churches or, they're, or they're, they're looking for recovery programs and they don't, they don't struggle with that. And, and I always say, thank God you don't struggle with that. But Celebrate Recovery is for any hurt, habit, or hang up. And, and what that simply means is we've all been hurt. We've all experienced something in our lives, whether it's, you know, young, you know, teenager. It, it doesn't matter where you are in life. You know, I'm, I'm I guess, middle aged. And, and got into recovery about six years ago. So it's just one of those, the biggest misconception is it's drugs and alcohol, when really nationally or internationally, that accounts for about a third. So that means two thirds of the people that come to celebrate recovery are there for, you know, codependency, gambling, you know, you name it, kind of a non-chemical. You know, I would, I would attend church, I would, I would teach Sunday school. And when I got into recovery, I realized, hey, you are an empty suit. And I remember reading that one time and I mean, just rereading that testimony of a person that I'm like, that, that is me. You know, I'm playing the game. I come to church, I smile, but I'm an empty suit. And, and so for the last six years of being in recovery, it, it's almost like my, my desire is that relationship, sustained recovery, sustained relationship with Christ. But it's almost like I'm not being an empty suit anymore. I can't be an empty suit. For those or that one person out there who's skeptical, <laughs> who's watching this thinking, yeah, yeah, not, not for me, or I'm just not there yet, you haven't hit your rock bottom, let me just encourage you to, to think about the cost of continuing with whatever is your issue. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, drugs or alcohol. Um, anger, you know, I, I see such anger in individuals and that anger drives a lot of poor choices and i think anger comes down to lack of control and for me i had to kind of accept you know that uh, the only thing i can control uh, on a daily basis quite frankly is my attitude my attitude and my relationship with god everything else i don't control i you know i challenge you to think about what freedom really feels like or go back to a time in your life before whatever the hurt habit and hang up is and remember what it was like not to have to deal with this because that's freedom. But here's the most important takeaway is the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you what, um, having been in recovery, having kind of recommitted my life to Christ, I wake up every day glad to be alive I wake up every day glad that my Lord died for me and, and loves me and that I matter to him. You matter to Christ. It's time.